Lucy Burns. I was fortunate to be born into an Irish Catholic family who valued education and learning. I attended Columbia University, Vassar College, and Yale University before becoming an English teacher. Three years of teaching was enough for me. I was more interested in continuing my own studies, like languages at Bonn University in Germany and Oxford in England. I met Emmeline Pankhurst and her two daughters. They were part of a militant suffrage organization whose motto was deeds, not words. Inspired by their passionate activism for woman suffrage, I joined their campaigns. One night in a police station while waiting to be arrested, a woman about my age introduced herself. She said she was noticing my American flag lapel pin and told me her name was Alice Paul, also waiting to be arrested. We returned to the United States around 1912, and we were determined to reshape and re-energize the American campaign for women's suffrage. We joined the National American Women's Suffrage Association, called NASA for short, mm -hmm. and we were put on a, a com committee in charge of working toward a federal amendment. There was only $10 in the budget for us to work with, but in true suffragist style, in only three months, we planned an elaborate parade, a public event to gain maximum national attention. There would be floats, horses, bands, and thousands of women marching up Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, and it would coincide with Woodrow Wilson's presidential inauguration. The date was March 2nd, 1913, the day before his inauguration. We put President Wilson on notice that we were a new generation of American suffragists, and we were quite literally moving forward. The scene at the parade turned ugly, however, when we were attacked by crowds of angry men, first with insults and obscenities, and later with physical violence while the police stood by and did nothing to help. But our group of suffragists made headlines in the newspapers all across the nation. In just a few months, Lucy and I became a dynamic force in the American suffrage movement, injecting it with new life and vitality. Lucy told you about some of our similarities, but we definitely had our differences, too. These differences were overshadowed by our shared passion for the cause. We were often described as having one mind and one spirit. Although Carrie Chapman Catt and Alice and I shared the same goal of universal suffrage, Carrie Chapman Catt wanted to endorse Wilson for president. So Lucy and I gathered some women together who shared our ideas and we formed a new party called the National Women's Party, the NWP for short. We um, organized silent sentinels to stand outside the White House, holding banners and signs inscribed with incendiary phrases, all directed at President Wilson. At first, he treated us with bemused condescension, but later, uh, when the American, America entered World War I, uh, people's ideas changed. We were criticized for uh, picketing a wartime president. We began to be arrested on the, on the, the trumped up charm of charge of obstructing traffic, even, even jailed when we refused to pay our imposed fines. Undaunted, he continued to try to break our spirit. The police arrested hundreds of our sentinels and sentenced Alice and me to several months in prison at the Occoquan workhouse in Virginia. 
This led to being beaten and pushed into cold and rat-infested cells. Alice was put in solitary confinement and was deprived of sleep and force-fed. They tried to have her declared insane, but she wouldn't admit to Woodrow Wilson being her personal enemy, which would have been enough to declare her insane. She heard one doctor say, she's got a spirit like Joan of Arc and you're never gonna break it. She may die, but she'll never give up. The night of terror began the final push for suffrage. Americans were outraged when they learned of the treatment and forced feedings. Of courageous women who led the way for women's equality. On August 20th, 1920, the final state of 36 needed for ratification was Tennessee. The deciding vote was to be cast by 24-year-old Harry T. Byrne, the youngest of the Tennessee delegation. Wearing a red rose indicating anti-suffrage and originally intending to vote no like many of the southern states, he changed his mind after receiving a letter from his mother, urging him to vote yes for suffrage, which he did. And six days later, August 26, 1920, Secretary of State Colby certified the ratification and with a stroke of his pen, American women won the right to vote after a 72 year battle. The flag behind me uh, is our suffrage flag. When each state ratified the amendment, I sewed a different star on the flag. It ended up with exactly the 36 states that were needed for ratification.